Lone Record to the new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Shadow Charizard and the Shadow Ho-Oh in the Jungle Cup. This is going to be my final video for the Jungle Cup. I'm most likely going to make another video for the Master League tomorrow, but as Jungle Cup is going to go away in two days, yeah, that's basically going to be the final one. Did quite a lot of like videos for this cup, and I think this cup was honestly quite a lot of fun. And so today we're going to take a look at something spicier for the end, just because we kind of want to have a little bit more fun with the Shadow Charizard, which basically gets hard countered every single game by a lantern in the back, currently at least in my meta. And um, you're going to have in the back also the Ho-Oh, and honestly, Ho-Oh was so much fun to play, like this thing literally destroyed entire teams which was absolutely mad. So maybe we can see something here like this today as well. So we're gonna be able to go ahead and go to our women's cut against the Lantern, but because Ho-Oh needs energy advantage and shield advantage to be great, we cannot want to not use any shields here. So this will allow us to get at least one fast move throw and get some energy with it. But actually we're gonna get two fast moves throw, allowing us to get a ton of energy. But we don't need the energy because look at this in the back. It's going to be an Obama Snow which is gonna go down by three fast moves of our whole oh, completely destroying it and the Vigoroth is not gonna survive it either. So basically Ho-Oh is doing so much damage in this current meta, it is wild, but also we're going to get completely hard walled by any water and um, poison type Pokemon, basically. If I would have played this team in the first week of this um, cup, I think we would have had a way better time for ourselves, because back then not as many water and poison type Pokemon were around, and now like a lot of people are latching with those Pokemon, so... Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Here we're gonna see the Vigoroth coming in. I think we see Impetai on them here. We're gonna go for the bait anyway. And this will allow us to get a shield from them as I'm going to let this move go through. I was hoping that I can maybe go for like two Earthquakes against the opponent here with my Ho-Oh in the back, but it's going to be a tough one for us no matter what. As we can try to let this move go through, we're gonna go for the Moonblast anyway. Moonblast is going to do a ton of damage and hopefully gonna put them into a range where I can go for, never mind, I can just completely knock them out anyway. Let's see what they have in the back, it's going to be the Obama Snow, and in comes again the Toxapex. Can we outspeed them though? We have to go for a Brave Bird, we get a free fast move in, and this free fast move is lovely, because like this, I can even go for an Earthquake first, and then go for the Brave Bird, because it's going to allow me to just go ahead and get no debuff, but never mind, the opponent lets this move go through anyway, and I'm gonna still go for a charge move here, because I expect that I I need to go for a Moonblast in order to knock them out, but honestly, maybe it would have been even enough to just go for an extra fast move, who knows. But here, Weather Ball is coming in. Can we still reach the Moonblast in time? We can, and so we can actually still win this game, even though we got completely destroyed by the first Pokemon of the opponent. So, moving on, we're going to see here the next one coming through. It's going to be a Vigoroth where we can stay in for a little bit. Usually, I'm just going to go for one Moonblast and wait until they throw their own charge move and then swap out into my Charizard. You have to swap out eventually here because you have to keep your lead alive in case they have a Lantern in the back, and Lantern is quite common. So, we swap out, we're going to get out an Altaria, and this is actually a fairly decent matchup, and honestly, after playing this team, I would actually recommend you to go for a normal Charizard over a Shadow Charizard just for this matchup, because if you would have a normal Charizard, you would easily be able to get to another Dragon Claw now. And I'm not too sure if this is going to be the case. I think in this case it would have been um, correct, like okay here for us, but um, there were definitely some cases against Altaria where I was not able to get to another charge move, and this was then kind of unfortunate because it did not allow us to yeah, get another shield from the opponent. But here we're going to still get a shield advantage. And again, for this team, it is very important to get a shield advantage with a Pokemon like Ho-Oh in the back, but I'm actually going to give it up here right now which I am not too sure if that's going to be too smart. I try to catch the move, but yeah, okay, I expect that it's going to be a double dragon line. And here I make a mistake. I should have went ahead and used a shield, but because they had so much energy on the Vigoroth as well, I guess there was maybe no great play that I could have done. With a shield, I would have been able to get the final shield from the opponent as well, which I'm gonna get now. But yeah, it doesn't really help me. I don't think there was a way of winning this game. So sadly, the opponent is gonna go down here, but they're still going to have too much health on the Vigoroth and they survive with one HP. Next opponent, we're going to have here a very spicy Pokemon. I think this is like the first time I see this Pokemon. Decent for our lead anyway, which is going to be the Hippowdon here. Hippowdon going to go for the Weather Ball. Um, yeah, Rock, which is going to be fine. What is also going to be fine is going to be Trevenant, because Trevenant goes down with four fast moves of our Ho-Oh, which means also that they can only go for one own charge move. And so, as you're going to see here, I can go for a double Brave Bird as well against the opponent if they are not going to decide to um, use a charge move prior, which they would be able to reach. 
but they don't, and so that's going to be great. I could have even went for the Earthquake here and gave myself a little bit more HP so they couldn't farm me down as easily, but it is what it is. It doesn't really matter because they're still stuck in this matchup. It allows me to go for a Seed Bomb. This is going to be able to knock them out, and now the opponent decides to forfeit as they get completely walled anyway. Next opponent, we're going to have a Skarmory in the lead, allowing us to go into our Charizard immediately as they can encounter Whiskash. Whiskash is not as bad as, for example, a Quagsire. Shadow Quagsire one-shot C with an Aqua Tail, which is pretty awkward. But here, yeah, we will be able to get a shield advantage and also some damage on them, and I'm totally happy about this. But, um... I kind of expect that this Whiskash is running the move Blizzard because like I made a video about Blizzard Whiskash as well before. It is definitely a solid play here, but still because of the lead, I'm not really able to do anything but let this move go through. And now I just have to hope that I can farm down with the ho -Oh. We still actually have a decent chance here as long as the Scald doesn't debuff because we should be able to farm down with one more fast move. But they're gonna get the debuff and actually two more fast moves are not even enough to knock out the wrist catch and with this I just gotta give up at this point and we can move on to the next opponent. In comes a Steelix. This is going to be an interesting one because we have two fire types in the back. I kind of want to swap out eventually and I don't really want to go straight for a charge move but let's see. We're going to be able to take the breaking swipe even better for us as we can swap out and they swap out into their lantern. This is exactly why you kind of want to go ahead and go into your Charizard here to counter those or like get out those water type Pokemon. Still going to do a ton of damage here. Honestly like the matchup is not that bad for the Charizard and we can go for another um, Dragon Claw here. Dragon Claw is going to get them fairly low, and we could go straight for a charge move here, but maybe I can even try to farm them down with my Whimsicott. Never mind, I'm just going to go straight for it because I just want to waste the 100 energy from the opponent. But they actually decide to use a shield here where I'm like, are they like weak with the entire team against my Whimsicott? This could be the case, but still, I'd rather keep my shields for my ho -Oh in the back as I decide to go for a Thunderbolt. This should allow me to go for the full farm down here. Hopefully it is enough. That's great. As I swap back into the Steelix, I kind of want to get rid of some of the opponent's health here. So I go for one Seed Bomb and now I can swap out into the ho -Oh, which will allow me to um, just yeah, get a ton of damage onto them with my fast move. Luckily, we don't get the debuff here and so we can just farm them down and win in this game as the opponent decides to forfeit. Next opponent coming through, finally a decent lead for us, which is going to be the Lantern, and we can see that they swap out into the Vigoroth, where we don't really have the best answer to it. But we can go for a Moonblast. Moonblast is going to be okay, as this is going to get them fairly low, and what I can do now is I can go into my Ho-Oh. They should not be able to reach a rock side as far as I know, and so I can just take this move, and what we can also do is we are running Earthquake here, and this is exactly why you kind of want to have Earthquake and the Great League in my opinion, just because there are more targets for this compared to Sacred Fire, and so we can just go ahead and try to knock them out, but they call it and they decide to use a shield here, and our clocks are unaligned because we both went for a charge move against each other, and so I am in a tough spot now. We are forced to use a shield here, and honestly, I should have risked it and tried to wait out until my Charizard comes back up, but like as I saw, maybe I had quite a little bit of a lag there, and so as the opponent lets this move go through, we're going to have the Charizard now against the Lantern, and we're in a kind of awkward spot now, like the lag definitely did not really help me here at all, but it is what it is, we're gonna see the Dragon Claw coming through, we can still try to do our best, we're forced to use the shield here on the Charizard, because what are we supposed to do? Um, and so they can go for another serve, and with this, this game is over, I'm just going to allow them to farm me down now, and we can move on to the next opponent. A Whimsicott against a Charger Bug. This is going to be an interesting one, because Charger Bug is going to be tough for my backline, but also, um, Charger Bug has the move Exorcist, which is going to be double resisted against my backline. So I can play a little bit around it, which I'm going to do here. I'm going to catch the Exorcist, double resisted Exorcist coming through, not doing any damage at all, wasting all their energy. And so they can still go for a discharge, but I can still at least um, get a shield from the opponent again. Trying to go for a bait here as the Dragon Claw is coming through. This Dragon Claw is going to definitely get the shield from the opponent, as they kind of want to align themselves, I would imagine. But no, it actually doesn't. But I can still go for another one, and this is most likely going to get the shield now. 
it is. And so I can go back into my Ravens account because again, you kind of want to keep the health as well as a shield for the whole oh, hole in the one shield scenario, like one to zero. Basically beats everything, I think. I don't actually think there is a Pokemon that can beat it. I'm kind of curious now. If there is, I'm going to take a look at the side rig rig. As you can farm them all the way down, um, we're going to be able to just see here that the opponent is going to go for a Shadow Ball, totally fine for us. And so we can just get a ton of energy and there's going to be a Mantine. And Mantine is maybe the only Pokemon that can beat us in the 1-2-0 shield scenario. And so we are sadly going to encounter the worst possible Pokemon and we're going to lose this game. At least that's maybe what you expect here, but it is not the case because you can still go for the seed bomb. As the opponent did not swap out, I don't think they had the chance of swapping out yet, and we still get the fast move through and knock out the charger bug. Next opponent, we're going to have a Vigoroth here. Vigoroth is going to be kind of a decent one for us. I actually kind of enjoy this lead um, because it can just play it pretty easily. Just going to go for one charge move with your Whimsicott, get some damage onto them and then swap out into your Charizard and do some more damage with that. But the opponent swaps out into Mantine, which is actually okay for us. We can take one Aerial Ace from the opponent. And so let's see what the opponent is going to do here. They're going to go for the Aerial Ace. We can still go for a Blast Burn. Blast Burn does more damage. And yes, um, Shadow Ho -Oh against the meta wins clearly in the 1 to 0 shield scenario against everything like 32 wins zero losses it is absolutely madness and it's not even close like there's not even pokemon that comes close to knocking it out so definitely a monster in the 1 to 0 shield scenario it is absolutely wild but yeah we're going to see here that the opponent is going to still have their vigor i try to get them a little bit lower so we can incinerate them down but i don't know if that's going to work out for us let's take a look at this the opponent goes for a charge move i can use a shield i should be able to still farm them all the way down if they stay in this matchup and as you can see they are staying in and we're gonna see them going to have a pal set in the back i can still go for a charge move before they can do anything and as we still have a shield left this game is over i can just get incinerate through and the brave bird afterwards will be enough to knock them out uh, with like the one HP that they still have left and yeah I can go for an earthquake and this is going to be fine but we can now go ahead and go for the final battle of today. This battle is kind of an example on what you can play basically with this team if you want to go full tryhard as you're going to have here um, instead of our Pokemon of Charizard, we're going to have here the Lantern in the back. We have still have the Whimsicott in the lead, and we have a very similar Pokemon in the back here, which you might already guess at this point. As you can see, we can take the Surf, we can go back into the Whimsicott and try to get some extra energy as well here, trying to get at least a little bit of an advantage. But um, I actually make a little bit of a mistake as well, which I don't think really matters too much, but we're going to take a look at this. We're going to be able to go for a Seed Bomb here. This is going to knock them out. And here, as they're going to go into the Town Flame, we could have went for one extra fast move. I was just not really sure what kind of fire and flying type Pokemon it is going to be, but the Town Flame would have, um, yeah, we could have just went for an extra fast move that had a little bit more energy on my Whimsicott. In comes the Flame Charge. We can still do a ton of damage with the fast move, which is absolutely wild. I get to the Earthquake, which is not going to drop my defense dead, which is most likely the best play that I can go for. But I'm forced to go for a shield now, of course, against the fly. We are shieldless. The opponent still has one shield. I can still go for another Earthquake because I kind of cannot really um, drop my defense anymore because like, yeah, I kind of need to still survive a move here. But I doubt that I'm going to be able to survive a Moonblast. Even though it's resisted, it's still going to be enough to knock me out. And sadly, as we are not going to run the other charge, we are not running the... I think it is Grass Knot, we are running the Seed Bomb, it's not going to be enough to knock them out at this point, so we are going to lose a final battle, but yeah, this is going to be it for the Jungle Cup on my channel. Actually, this is a lie of which I kind of realized because I'm most likely going to stream tomorrow with a Dragon Cup, so definitely stay tuned for this, just a standard stream, no sponsor or anything. So I'll see you then, bye bye.